Hello, I'm Eric Roby. And I'm Tracy Reynolds filling in for Carla Schaefer, and this is Anne Arundel County Week in Review. We have a great show today, including a live in-studio performance from our own senior idol and a talk with a local teen who has big aspirations. Making headlines this week, another farm on the Broadneck Pen Peninsula is about to be protected forever from development. The Maryland Board of Public Works approved more than $2 million in state and federal funds for Anne Arundel County to buy the Spriggs Farm on the Magothy River. This beautiful property sits right in the middle of two residential developments and Anne Arundel Community College on the other side of College Parkway. County Executive Leopold called the farm a crown jewel of the Magothy, stating, the significance of this property is evidenced by federal, state, and local government coming together during difficult times to invest in something that will benefit future generations. The farm contains over 40 acres of mature forest and a two-acre pond that will be an outdoor classroom for local students. The pending purchase by the county comes after a grassroots effort formed in 2009 to save Spriggs Farm. The effort was spearheaded by the neighborhoods of Olmsted, Bayberry, and Stonington. In today's tough economy, we're seeing more and more children being affected. At the end of this month, County Executive Leopold will hold his fourth annual Homeless Resource Day at Glen Burnie High School. This event has been very successful because it helps hundreds of adults and children with basic services such as job and housing assistance, dental care, clothing, and food. Homeless Resource Day will be held on March 26th from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The deadline to register as a volunteer is coming fast, so call to register by March 14th at 410-269-4500, or you can always visit them online at www.volunteeranarundel.org. And in this week's Community Spotlight, Jody Letty has more information about this important event. Jody. Hello, I'm Jody Letty, and with me today are Faye Morrow, Director of the Volunteer Center for Anne Arundel County, and Chris Polson the Program Manager for Community Initiatives with the Department of Social Services. Today we're going to talk about Anne Arundel County's fourth annual Homeless Resource Day to take place Saturday, March 26th at Glen Burnie High School. So, tell me Chris, what is Homeless Resource Day? Well, Jody, Homeless Resource Day is a one-stop, one-shop event to help the homeless. Many of the homeless spend many hours waiting for services. They may not have transportation to services. So this is an occasion where the homeless can come and we bring the services to them. So they can access vital services that they need from benefits, uh, photo IDs, um, health care, um, in one place at one day. Okay, so if, I, if a person needs transportation to and from the event, how would, is that provided? We do provide transportation. The Department of Aging um, and Disabilities in the county lends us their drivers and their vans, and we have pickup points at four spots in the county, uh, North County in Glen Burnie, West County out in Odenton, uh, South County in Edgewater, and uh, West County, Central County in Stanton Center in Annapolis. Okay, and throughout the day, will they, are there certain pickup and drop-off times? Well, we run the vans continuously, so they okay. start at 8 in the morning and they leave Glen Burnie High School. Our last pickup will be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, with the current state of the economy, I would imagine that this type of event is needed now as much as ever. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about a story about a typical homeless family in Anne Arundel County as I know that homelessness can affect any of us from any background at any time. Mm. Yeah, and there really isn't a typical um, occurrence of homelessness. I can tell you last year at Homeless Resource Day, our youngest person there was 17 years old who was working part-time and still in high school, to our oldest person who was 93 years old who came for services then. So we have homeless families, we have homeless individuals. I often say homelessness can happen to anybody if you suddenly stop receiving a paycheck for four weeks or you have a medical catastrophe or something happens that is totally unexpected and not planned for. It could put anybody in danger of homelessness. Mm -hmm. So if I want to volunteer to help with this event, what types of services, what types of donations are needed and can I help at the event itself? What can I do? 
Absolutely. Any and all of the above. You okay. can help at the event itself. Um, you can go to the Volunteer Center for Anne Arundel County, which Faye, I'm sure, is going to talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about. Right. And then in donations, we're taking donations of canned good items, um, toiletries, socks, and underwear. And that is also on the website with directions of where you can drop those items off. Um, and we will be setting up the evening of March 25th, the night before, okay. and we certainly can use volunteers to help then and also the day of the event. Okay. So, Faye, what's the process for someone to get signed up to, to register to volunteer? Well, we would direct them to the Volunteer Center's website, which is volunteerannarundle.org. Okay. And they will just click through to the information about the fourth annual Homeless Resource Day. There's a packet of information there. There's information about the types of volunteers that are needed, the times that they're needed, what they might be doing as a volunteer on the day before, as, as Chris said, for setup. And by the way, that's the only day that we can um, offer youth an opportunity to participate, other than donation drives. That, of course, is, there's information about that too. But on the day before for setup, we will have youth as young as 15 volunteering. There's a lot to do to help with sorting and with helping with all the organizations and the others set up for the coming morning. But on the 26th itself, volunteers should be 18 and older. Okay. There's a registration form on the website, which needs to be filled out the old fashioned way by hand with okay. your signature and then faxed to the uh, contact that'll be given on the form. As we're keeping track of all those volunteers, it's really important to us to get their feedback, to make sure, of course, that, that they are placed in, in the position that they have requested um, as we need them. We need more people in the morning. I, I wanna warn mm -hmm. folks that we have four hour shifts or they could be encouraged to stay all day if they could okay. and enjoy that great food. <laughs> but the first shift starts at 7.30 in the morning. For those who want their afternoons though, that's great, mm -hmm. four hours and you know, 11.30 comes and you're, you're out of there, you're finished. And then there are two uh, subsequent shifts at, uh, at 11.30 and then at three. The 3 p.m. shift, even though it's at the end of the day, is important because we have so much to pack up mm -hmm. and put back and get ready to be picked up because the school is a wonderful host. They are so gracious to allow us to do this, and we want to leave their school in just as great a condition as we found it. In addition to having the buses come and dropping people off where they are greeted by a volunteer, and a volunteer will stay with them the whole day, that big school requires other volunteers to serve as escorts and greeters and um, giving directions helping people get to the right place. There are so many service providers, 40, 50 this year? We have 50 service providers that okay. will be coming to the event this year. So there are amazing resources available and the, the volunteers are there to, to stay with their guests all day, to make them um, feel comfortable, to help them meet all their priority needs to make sure that they are well taken care of, and then to sit and eat with them at lunch with that wonderful food that, that will be there for everyone to enjoy. Make it a, a great day for the volunteers too. So uh, over the past, well I guess this is the fourth, so over the past three years of having the event, how has, how has this event changed the service provided to the homeless in Anne Arundel County? Have you seen an improvement in the services provided as, as a direct result of this event? Actually, I have, Jody. It's really interesting, and it was something we didn't expect at first, but a lot of the service providers did not really know who the homeless were, per se, or some of the needs of the homeless. I don't think um, the first year people realized the importance of having a photo ID, because if you do not have a photo ID, you can't apply for benefits, cash assistance, food stamps. You can't even get on a bus to go back to another state if you have family in another state. Um, we also found that some of the services providers did not know one another. So as much as the event was for the homeless, mm -hmm. it was a great networking opportunity for all the service providers in the county to work with each other. And from that first year, we have seen other programs grow out of that, which is wonderful. They concentrate on the homeless after that. So that has been a joy to all of us who helped organize the first one. I think it's really carried on where we hoped it would.
That's wonderful. Sounds like a great um, community event. So if I don't have um, the time to volunteer the day before, the day of, uh, and I want to make a mo monetary donation, <laughs> um, I'm guessing that you would very much appreciate that as well. How would I make a monetary donation? Well, that's always appreciated. <laughs> there are expenses to putting on an event like this. And I know your budget's very restricted, very so every tight. little bit helps. That's right. We're all in tight budget times, as everybody is well aware. So if anybody would like to make a monetary donation, they could make the check out to the Homeless Resource Day, and they could send it to the Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services, 80 West Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Um, they could also call me. I'm perfectly happy to take any phone calls, and I can give you my number, 410-269-4460. And I'm hopeful we'll be up on Facebook um, mm -hmm. soon. So look for us on Facebook, because that's another way they could participate. And I think the uh, Facebook link was going to be called Arundel Cares. So. If you're a Great. Facebooker, look for Arundel Cares on Facebook, and mm -hmm. it will link you directly to information about this event, I believe. Um, so, Faye, thanks for being here with us. Get, let's give us your um, contact information if anyone has any questions Thank about you. volunteering, please. Please mm -hmm. do. I'll give the website again, but our number is 410-897-9207, and the website is www.volunteerannarundel.com. Dot org. So the uh, the email would be the same. It'd be to Fay F A Y at volunteerandarundel dot org. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, ladies. Um, Ms. Chris Polson, Ms. Faye Morrow. I appreciate so much what both of you do with the Department of Social Services and the Volunteer Center for Anne Arundel County. Thank you for helping people every day, and especially with this Homeless Resource Day on Saturday, March twenty sixth, Glen Burnie High School. We need all the volunteers we can get. Yes, great. And uh, thanks so much for all of your hard work. Um, for Anne Arundel County's Week in Review, I'm Jody Letty, and thank you for all that you do for your community. Thanks, Jody. You can donate several items, including blankets, canned foods, and others. For a complete list, go online and like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com backslash Arundel Cares. And this week's Hot Topics, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to 1,361 calls for service. This included more than 1,043 emergency medical calls and 89 fire calls. This week, one person was injured in a two-car collision in Pasadena, and a Glen Burnie family's home was rendered uninhabitable after a late afternoon fire ripped through the residence and sent a column of thick black smoke into the air that could be seen for miles. With me now to tell us more about these incidents is Division Chief Michael Cox from the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief. On Tuesday, Anne Arundel County firefighters were called to the intersection of Catherine Avenue and 207th Street in the community of Greenhaven. The first unit to arrive on the scene reported a two-vehicle collision with entrapment. Firefighters and paramedics utilizing specialized rescue tools were able to successfully remove the door of one vehicle and gain access to the injured and trapped patient. The patient was fully immobilized by crews operating on the scene as a precaution and ultimately transported to Baltimore Washington Medical Center in Glen Burnie for further evaluation. A second incident this week also occurred on Tuesday. Around 4.48 p.m., Anne Arundel County firefighters responded to a reported dwelling fire in the 100 block of Warfield Road in the Brooklyn Park area of the county. The first arriving units reported visible fire and heavy smoke throughout the first floor and attic spaces of a one-story split foyer type home. At that time, additional resources were requested and an interior fire attack was initiated by the first arriving crews. In all, it took more than 50 firefighters about 30 minutes to bring the two-alarm incident under control. There was one occupant, a 13-year-old girl home at the time of the fire, the occupant was able to escape prior to the fire department's arrival. However, she did suffer minor injuries in the process. She was evaluated at the scene by fire department paramedics and ultimately transported to Harbor Hospital Center via ground ambulance for treatment. The fire, which originated in the interior of the dwelling, caused an estimated $110,000 in damages. The exact cause of the fire remains under investigation by county fire investigators. However, the incident is believed to be accidental in nature. Thank you, Chief. 
County fire officials advised that the home was rendered inhabitable and the local chapter of the American Red Cross was assisting the family with temporary housing. Well, folks, there's more Week in Review to come. Take a look at the community calendar for what's happening around your county. Stay with us. We'll be right back. outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. And welcome back, folks. Well, as we've been telling you here on Week in Review, it's model government. And this is the time of year when our county officials will look a lot younger. High school students from all around our county are participating in student model government. And that means that our county executive, county councilmen, and folks like me and Tracy have shadows with us doing our jobs. And today we've got one of those students, South River Junior, Jillian Buck. Jillian, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Jillian, what got you interested in this program? This is your second year being involved in the Anne Arundel County Model Government Program. It is. Um, I've always involved, I've been involved with student government, and so last year I applied for the program and enjoyed it a lot, so I decided to apply again this year. Well, we love having you back. <laughs> What are some things that you've learned uh, shadowing the uh, various county officials that you've shadowed? You had a chance to shadow me and mm -hmm. you also shadowed uh, the councilman from District 7, uh, yeah. Trish Johnson from last time. Um, what, are some, what are some things that you've pulled away from your experience? Well, last year uh, we went to the landfill, so that was extremely interesting and educational. Mm -hmm. I'm very environmentally aware, so that was nice. And then being able to do the Mott County Council and sit as a councilman was very interesting as well. And today has been a lot of fun Good. getting to go through the grant meeting. That was very eye-opening and interesting to see how the government works. Great. So do you have any aspirations of uh, one day getting a job in government? Eventually. After college and a few years out in the career field, I would like to come back into politics. Yeah, well, that would be great. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do at South River. You play sports. I, I understand you run cross country. And you've been giving me a little lesson, thank you. <laughs> yes, I run cross country. I'm in NHS. I'm on the robotics team. I'm the captain of the JV team. Oh, wow. So uh, in the community, I'm a Girl Scout. I'm involved in CRASC, the county SGA. So lots of various activities. Great activities. And with all that, Tracy, she maintains a GPA of? <laughs> I have a 4.1 weighted and 3.72 unweighted. Very good. She doesn't sleep. I mean, <laughs> she must not. A lot of activities she must to be not. involved in. Well, another big activity that I learned that you're involved in, you're one of three in about a week's time here, maybe two weeks' time, that'll be running for one of the most important positions for a student in the entire country, and that's our Anne Arundel County student member on the Board of Education. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, the student SMOB, student member on the Board of Education, in Anne Arundel County, it's the only full voting rights mob in the country. So it's a very big honor to be able to even run for the position. And I'm very excited about it. I've been involved with CRASC, which is the group that elects this mob mm -hmm. since uh, sixth grade. And I've wanted to run for SMOB since sixth grade. Wow. So I'm very excited about the election. So do you bring the student's perspective to the, to the board? Is that what happens? Yes, that's the job of the SMOB. Mm -hmm. And knowing so many students throughout the country and being willing and able to work with both students and adults, I think I would be very good for the position. Great. Well, best of luck with Thank that. Thank you that very much. Great. Best of luck indeed. Tell us a little bit about, um, Jillian, you've, you've got a well-rounded, you've got a very well-rounded life going on here. For students your age, what do you see as the biggest challenge to, to today's youth in the county? Hmm. Well, there are many, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the pressures of college and different education is a lot of pressure and so it's very challenging for that. The grades and maintaining and competitions are so fierce for it now. Mm 
And, and it's expensive. It it's is more expensive than ever expensive. before. And um, as you said, there's a lot of competition for to get in and then and for the scholarships and mm -hmm. the grants and the money that's out there. So I would imagine that is a big hurdle. Keep going though. Don't give up. <laughs> well, you, you definitely represent the students of Anne Arundel County very well. Thank we you. wish you best of luck in your election to a student member on the Board of Education. Thank I know that would be a joy to have you down there on the board. So uh, so good luck to you. And uh, that's the 24th of March, correct? It is, is that election? Two so weeks from coming today. Up. Coming up quick. Well, folks, you heard it here. One of our finest students here in Anne Arundel County, Miss Jillian Buck. Jillian, thanks for joining us on the program. Thank and you. folks at home, stay tuned. We'll be back for much more Anne Arundel County Week in Review. There are a lot of myths about hiring people with disabilities. It will cost a lot of money. The truth is... 50% of accommodations cost under $500. People with disabilities. Fact is, 90% of workers with disabilities' performances are rated average or above. See the possibilities create opportunity. Work matters. Visit mdod.maryland.gov. Welcome back. On March 5, 2011, at approximately 10.30 p.m., Northern District officers responded to the 100 block of Workshire Lane in Glen Burnie for a report of an armed robbery that just occurred. Joining us now is Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy with further details on this investigation. Justin. Thanks, Eric. When officers arrived on scene, they spoke to the victim, a 23-year-old male employee of Pizza Bullies, who stated that he was making a delivery at the aforementioned location when he was approached by two male subjects. Now, one suspect displayed a handgun and demanded money along with the pizza bag. The victim complied with the suspect's demands and turned over an undisclosed amount of money along with the pizza bowlies delivery bag. Both suspects then fled on foot and were last seen running towards Harris Heights Avenue. Numerous patrol officers along with the canine unit and the aviation unit responded to the area to complete a canvas, but were unable to locate the suspects in this case. The investigation is ongoing at this time. We do, however, have a suspect description. Suspect number one is being described as a black male, 18 to 20 years old, about 5'6", with a thin build, last seen wearing a black beanie cap. Also, description on the second suspect being described as a black male, 18 to 20 years old, 5'6", with a thin build, also last seen wearing a black beanie cap. Similar description on both suspects. Moving on now to our second incident, which took place on February 27th. This was around 11.31 in the evening when officers from the Northern District responded to the 7800 block of Americana Circle in Glen Burnie for a report of an armed robbery of a delivery driver. Now, when officers got on scene, they spoke with the victim, a 32-year-old male from Severn, who stated that he was on a food delivery at an apartment when he was approached by two male suspects wearing masks. One suspect brandished a handgun and demanded money. The victim complied, and the suspects took an undisclosed amount of money. Also, they took some food from the victim and were last seen running toward the rear of the building. Several officers in a canine unit canvassed the area, but were unable to locate the suspects. Moving ahead now, on March 3rd, the Northern District Detective Unit, along with QRT, the Quick Response Team, executed two search and seizure warrants in Glen Burnie. The warrants stemmed from the ongoing investigation into the armed robbery of the aforementioned pizza delivery driver. Now, during the search warrants, detectives recovered evidence of the crime, including a 25 caliber handgun and a ski mask. The investigation and search warrants ultimately yielded two arrests. Both suspects were charged with armed robbery, theft, and reckless endangerment. The juvenile suspect was charged as an adult, and the robbery qualified him for an automatic waiver to the adult criminal justice system. The suspects were Corey James Cameron, age 18, of 6902 Glen Ridge Circle, apartment C2 in Glen Burnie. The second suspect was Eukenan Nautica Thomas, age 16, of 7882 Americana Circle, apartment 102 in Glen Burnie. Again, he was charged as an adult. As always, if you have any information on any of the crimes or suspects we mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. The number is available 24 hours a day, toll free at 1-8667-LOCKUP. You can also text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274637. And your third option, visit the website, www.metrocrimestoppers.net. It's important to note phone calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might be eligible for a cash reward of up to $2,000. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Justin. If you are a regular Week in Review viewer, you probably know about our other shows, such as Most Wanted with Sheriff Bateman, Pet Court, and Pet of the Week. 
Well, we have some new programs that will air in March and April to tell you about. On Friday nights at 9 p.m., after Week in Review and the Gridiron Review, you can now see the Anne Arundel High School Battle of the Bands program in its entirety. Check out all of the young talent our high school students have to offer and grab your popcorn. It's about an hour, it's about four hours long, and the winners of the competition were Pandemonia, and they are out of Severna Park High School. And for all of you night owls, the show will also air every day at midnight. That's also a good way for you to set your DVR and watch it at your own speed. And we know you'll be setting your DVR. Mm. Well, in this week's Recreation Spotlight, Carolyn Ryan is at Severna Park High School to tell you about the department's annual summer camp and the program fair. Carolyn. Thanks, Eric. Well, we're here at Recreation Park's annual summer camp and program fair, and I've got Jackie Herman, Recreation Supervisor, with us. Thanks for being here, Jackie. Thank you for having me, Carolyn. So tell us a little bit about the camp fair. Well, we've invited all of the vendors that work with Recreation Parks to offer summer programs to the kids of the county. We have a wide range of vendors here from science to math, art, sports, tennis. We have taekwondo, aquatics programs. If you, you name it, we have it. Great. Now we also have our summer fun centers and our day camps represented as well. Yes, we do. We have our Quiet Waters and Downs Park day camps, which are for kids entering kindergarten through 10th grade. Then we have our summer fun centers for our new age group starting this year. We're taking them in kindergarten up through entering 6th grade. We have our teen camps for our 7th through 10th graders at uh, Kinder Farm Park and Crofton Middle School. Great. Now, how can people get information about the summer programs that we offer? Well, you can visit our website or you can come visit us again at our second fair, April 2nd at South River High School from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Or you can visit our website, aacounty.org slash recparks, and you can view all the programs online. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Carolyn. Looks like a lot of great programs over there at Severna Park and a lot of kids having fun when they get out of school. She's back. I mean, this used to be Carla, and I turn yeah. around and I look, and Tracy's I'm like a bad back. penny. I keep coming. You can't get rid of me. Oh, you came back on heads. Um, so how's things <laughs> okay. going? You're, uh, you got a Good. new director over there at the Department of Inspections and Permits? I do. I have a, a new director, and he's um, keeping me very busy. So I've been extremely busy uh, since leaving Week in Review. And we left a lot of weather for you, so you've had a lot of uh, little incidents around the county mm -hmm. with uh, snow and now some heavy rains this week, six or seven inches of rain yeah. possibly. And, and heavy, we've had a lot of wind this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was telling you earlier, I lost a gutter and a shutter in the last three weeks. A gutter and a shutter. A gutter and a shutter uh, because of the, the wind. But um, yeah. luckily, I got the gutter replaced before all the heavy rain. I haven't put the shutter back up yet. But, well, uh, the gutter's more important. Yes, absolutely, right. with all this rain especially. So there's yeah, a lot, lot going on, but I've been watching the show. Uh, what do I, you think? I new like format? the new set, new like set? the new format. Yeah. Um, very nice. The Sports Palace has been closed for two weeks because of uh, a leak. We had a leak in the Sports Palace, so we had to close the Sports uh, Palace down. Okay. But <clears throat> we'll be back. But you'll we'll be, be coming back, back next week. We should be back spring. in the spring or next week. Probably next week because uh, spring sports are really starting to take shape over the course of the next couple of, couple of days here in the yep. high school. I see so. the kids out there practicing their soccer and uh, getting ready. So Soccer? No. Soccer. No. I see soccer out It's of baseball them. and lacrosse. Well, Cross in high school, they also play soccer. In the fall. In the spring. <clears throat> in the fall. We've got a high school student. And chime in, high school student. Where's, where's Jillian? Chime in. Do they play soccer in the spring? Not at the high in schools. Leagues. I'm sorry. In Tracy. leagues, they do. In leagues, okay. So you get you get half credit. I just ride like, by Northeast um, High School every day, where just they like have you all used the. Just like used to get in high school, half credit for that test, mm -hmm. half credit for that answer. Well, we're very excited about a first for Week in Review on this show. One of our two senior idol winners, Shirley Valencia, Brooklyn Park, is here right now, live in studio, to perform for us. Shirley will be competing in the statewide senior idol contest at the end of this month. So without further ado, singing The Way We Were by Barbara Streisand, Miss Shirley Valencia. Memories 
light the corners of my mind. Misty water, colored memories of the way. That it was all so simple there Oh, has time rewritten every line And if we had the chance to do it all again Tell me, would we, could we May be beautiful and yeah. What's too painful to remember? We simply choose to forget. So oh, it's so loud. We will. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Valencia, the way we were. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank fantastic. You. fantastic. Thank you. Shirley, you've got to tell us a little bit about this. Where did this talented voice of yours come from? Um, God given. Um, we're from this. I was actually born in the South. We all sang together. We all played together. My girls grew up singing and just in the family. I sing in the choir at my Lansdowne Worship Center and I sing with the customers at my shop, Nancy Styling Salon, and that's it. And you sing in the shower? Uh, yes. <laughs> and have you ever sang in a contest before? No. This is your first time doing a contest? Yes. Were you nervous? Yes. Yes, singing in front of people? <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, well, yeah. It was just people that I knew and I mean and then there was people I didn't know and that's what really made it nervous. Mm -hmm. A little <laughs> so, nerve-wracking. Yes. <laughs> I imagine. So what does it mean? All your friends have got to be really proud of you. Uh, tell us how you got involved in this. My customers at the shop um, all belong to the Pascal Center and they're coming up to me. They had already signed me up mm -hmm. and they said well we we want you to do this and this is the day you're going to do it on. I'm going. And you don't have a choice. I have you're, no you're choice sure. at all and, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I mean I love the customers. Right. 41 years I've been doing this, so it's not a hard thing to do when they ask you to do something. That's great. That's great that they knew how well you could sing and that they, they signed you up for it, and um, you've come this far. Yes, this, this is good. Yeah, this is wonderful. And the next big thing, Tracy's going to tell us a little bit about it, but the, it's the Maryland Senior Idol Competition. Yes. It's coming up pretty soon, right, Tracy? Mm -hmm. That's right. And our Week in Review crew will be at the statewide, statewide competition on March 30th at the Chesapeake Arts Center in Brooklyn Park. If you want to join the cheering section for Shirley Valencia and fellow county winner Betty Rossler, the show is from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Tickets are $6 at the door, and for more information, you can call 410-222-6680. Well, Tracy, that was a great way to wrap up this week's Week in Review. Shirley, thanks for coming on Thank and you. being our guest. And if you could help us say goodbye, I'm going to go ahead and start to close it out. And we're going to say goodbye in just one moment here. Folks, that wraps up this edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes, they're always available at blip.tv and YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free video podcast at iTunes. And please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county. And ladies, we'll, we'll see, see you next time. time. Great job.